So I've talked a lot recently about uh, playing Destroyer and impacting games with that class. And while it is much easier to impact a game with a Destroyer, it's not uh, impossible to have a high amount of impact in a battleship. Uh, and especially in these ranked games, you can really, really, really do a lot for your team. And uh, it mainly involves pushing and being aggressive, which is really cool because that's what I like to do in this game. And it's uh, it's something that's kind of map dependent and enemy composition dependent. But I think you'd agree, Double Thunderer, three destroyers is a rough composition to push into. But we're still gonna make it work this game. It just involves intelligent island usage. You'll notice I asked our team to have a destroyer at the A cap. It never hurts to ask. Um, Obviously, you just can't expect people to respond uh, in the way you want to because it's the internet and people are going to do whatever they do, you know. But this case, uh, a nice thing happened where the Benham decided to go with us. Very, very good um, that we can get at least one destroyer for A, perhaps spotting, maybe capping it later. Um, hopefully not getting into a gunfight with a Marceau, <laughs> which I'm sure he knows not to do that. The biggest thing you want to be keeping an eye out for when you're playing a battleship in ranked or even in randoms and you want to have a big impact is shooting a destroyer. Um, even one or two hits on a destroyer can make a big, big difference. That's 1400 health that that guy doesn't have now. Either he uses a heal because it's a daring and he gets a heal or... Um, my team just gets that much extra damage on him, and then we can kill him easier. Yes, you don't get full pens anymore. Um, yes, swapping to high explosive is annoying and oftentimes not worth it. But even just sending your AP salvo in on a destroyer is often more impactful than shooting at a battleship, for example. Um, for the most part, I'm going to target a destroyer over a cruiser, and especially over a battleship. On the enemy team, it just kind of you, you got to deal damage to destroyers if you want to have a big impact as a battleship player. Just a bit of chip damage early on can definitely help your team in the late game. Maybe there's a destroyer trade that happens near the end of the game, and that extra thousand HP that you took off of that enemy destroyer can mean the difference between a win and a loss. Um, it's just those little things that add up. But we're pushing aggressive. Greece allows us to push into this middle rock. We do have to be careful, though, of the uh, Marceau. Of course, he can torp us here, but uh, we're getting really, really good angles here on the Nevsky and Thunder. And, uh, yeah, the main reason I'm okay with making this play right now is they don't have something like a Shimakaze, a Summers, a Gearing, something with a lot of torpedoes that they could just flood this channel with. Um, so we eat one torpedo, and that's not the end of the world for sure. And now that we're on this island... We can impact either side of the map whenever we want to. Uh, so wherever the enemy is pushing or wherever they're strong, wherever our team needs a little bit of help, we can be there to help out. Um, this is what you're looking for. Oftentimes you're not going to be able to push the middle of the map because there just won't be an island like this. So you're going to want to push hard on a flank. But you're looking for targets of opportunity like this Thunderer who is bow into our team and likely going to die. Uh, but it's possible he gets another shot into a destroyer or gets a lucky shot on our Petro, that kind of thing. So it's worth popping out here to try and kill him a little bit quicker. Uh, making little plays here and there are really, really going to help your team win the game a lot faster. Um, keeping pressure off your teammates, allowing them to survive more in tougher positions is always good. And you can see I'm turning out right away. I don't want to commit to this flank yet. Uh, we don't really know where their other Thunderer is going. He was last seen going directly to A. He probably turned around. The Nevsky turned around. If I bow in there, it's possible I just get farmed out for free. Uh, the Marceau, as you can see, is back over here already. So what do we want to do? We want to go push the other side of the map. If they've given up on the A side and they're trying to push our home cap, we want to take that ground that they've given up. They've given it up for free. We may as well take that space. And with our Thunder and Petro, we can form a nice crossfire as they try and push up. And then there'll be no way they win. We just got to get over there and do it. You can see the Nevsky's on his way over. 
he's pretty far back because we've chunked him a couple times. But you always want to be considering where the enemy team is pushing or likely to push and where the enemy team is likely to be holding or uh, maybe even running away from. Here, we know they're definitely running away from ACAP. The Thunderer now spotted, gets a little bit of a hit on us, but that's okay because now we know we can push really aggressively around this corner and we won't have to worry about a Thunderer popping up on our flank. Because um, it is possible the Thunderer went to the 1-2 line to maybe try and flank there by himself, get a pick on the Des Moines or something like that. But now we know that he's not there, I can push really, really aggressively and get an alternate angle. We just need our Petro and our Thunder to live. Uh, that's the biggest thing. While we're building this flank, we need those guys to live. And that way, once we build our angle, uh, yeah, it's just going to be game over for the enemies. Even though they've got two of our destroyers already and have a massive advantage in that right, um, we, uh, we can still come back from this. It's not over yet. And with a Kremlin, for example, you can make these really aggressive plays as long as you're not eating torpedoes, and uh, you can just live for a long time. So I'm just trying to push up to this island on my right and uh, use it for cover from the Marceau and really apply a lot of pressure on this Des Moines. This is the key ship that we need to get out. You'll know from a lot of my map guides that I've made, uh, there's a lot of radar islands that people like to use, and oftentimes if you can get around those radar islands, the ship will be stuck there, so it'll be easy for your team to just farm them out, or if they back up too far, you can just kill them for free. Um, that's why this position I'm in right now is so strong. Uh, it puts massive, massive pressure on that Des Moines. Obviously on the Nevsky as well, the Thunderer too. Uh, we're spotting for our team at the moment, and uh, we're applying a lot of pressure. And something like a Kremlin is able to live for a very, very long time while applying this pressure, which is really nice. Um, you can still do this in other battleships, for sure. But a Kremlin is often a good pick if you're trying to push a lot. You can see the Des Moines feels that pressure a lot, and he's already trying to turn out in a weird way. Pick up our second kill on the Nevsky. And, uh, this game's basically over now, because we're in this position. The enemy team really does have to kill me if they want to win this game. There's no way for them to push into B, and, uh... Well, if the Des Moines is going to turn out and just give us broadside, I'll take it. <laughs> but this is what high-impact battleship games look like. They're not played at the back of the map in your Thunderer spamming high explosive. They're pushing in aggressively, challenging areas of the map, searching for damage on destroyers. You'll notice as soon as this Marceau is spotted and pushing in, I'm instantly turning around to look at him. Uh... Any bit of chip damage, especially at close range, can add up. Um, and with battleships at closer ranges, oftentimes you can get hits of like maybe four or five shells, and that's like five to, you know, 8,000 damage, that kind of thing. And that guy can't heal that back. That's really, really, really important. Um, and there you go. A nice win. And uh, we're nearly on a Kraken. Hopefully we can pick that up yet as a nice little bonus. But... If you're trying to win games and you only have battleships or you uh, don't really care for playing destroyers all the time or maybe you don't want to play your radar cruiser, you can still have really high battle impact in a battleship. The key is to get yourself in positions where you're applying pressure to the enemy team but you're not overextending and dying. Um, like that enemy thunderer. <laughs> he, he was applying pressure but he pushed into a crossfire and that's obviously going to get you killed very, very quickly. Um, the most important thing, though, is to know how to recognize where the enemy team is strong and where they're weak. There's only seven ships in an entire map, uh, in ranked battles at least, and these maps are designed for 12v12, so there's got to be openings somewhere. It's up to you to find those openings and then push really hard on them. Um, if you, say, are the Thunder, Thunder player or Petro player on my team in this example, what they did was correct. They needed to play passive uh, because the enemy applied a lot of pressure on their side at the start. You can't just push into four or five ships when there's only two of you and expect that to go well. That's not going to work. Um, the biggest thing is understanding that they don't have enough ships to cover the entire map. And then all it is is information gathering at that point. 
if they have four or five ships on one flank, well, their other flank is weak. You can probably be pushing on that other flank. And then where their strong flank is, you want to be kiting away in a somewhat defensive strong position still. You don't want to totally give up that side, but you want to be able to impact the fight once your team builds the flank. That's really what playing Battleship and even just damage dealing cruisers is all about. Radar cruisers as well. You can see how hard our Des Moines started pushing once the Thunderer left. Uh, he played this incredibly well as well uh, as a radar cruiser. It's not always all the time that you find someone who's willing to play open water and just push hard in that radar cruiser. Oftentimes they'll want to sit behind the map. But my entire team played this incredibly well. Um, not over committing. Um, and pushing where needed, and holding where needed. It was it was really well done for just a random ranked team. And yeah, that's kind of how I like to approach games in a battleship when I'm trying to win. If I'm going for damage numbers, obviously you're going to sit at the back. But if your goal is to win, you need to be looking for those openings. You need to be looking for where the enemy team is going to be pushing and trying to hold that back and hold that at bay. So, so for those of you wondering, this is how I have my Kremlin built up. Um... It's a bit of a weird build because I also use this captain on my Slava. Um, but for Kremlin, you really do want emergency repair expert because of how valuable the damage controls are in dealing with fires. You don't actually need fire prevention as much in this build um, because you can use your repairs just on cooldown, basically, and you'll be fine from fires if you're tanking for a longer period of time. Uh, AA Gunner is a weird one because Kremlin AA is awful. It's the worst AA in the game. Not because the values are bad, but because it has zero HP. So you, you know, a single salvo from a Thunderer is going to knock off 50 to 80% of your H AA. So there's really no point in building for Kremlin AA. Um, but this is for Slava mainly. Uh, because that actually has the good turret, AA turret HP. What you could run, though, instead is Grease the Gears or Vigilance. Probably Vigilance if you're going for a full Kremlin uh, captain. Gunfeeder is less necessary on this ship because you do have overmatch on cruisers, but sometimes there's a Bowie in Battleship and you got to switch to it. But uh, you could definitely run Emergency Repair Expert, Preventive Maintenance, but uh, I think Gunfeeder is the best. Um, Adrenaline Rush is very, very strong because you know, you know what Adrenaline Rush is. It's very good. Um, the next skill I'm going to get is obviously Basics of Survivability, once we get the full 21 point commander. Um, in fact, can I get it? No, I can't quite get it. Um, but that's what the build will look like. Deadeye Concealment, because this is more of a randoms build, um, where oftentimes you're going to be activating the Deadeye uh, mechanic, I guess I call it. But something you could run if you wanted to go full tank, try hard build for just pushing, 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 like I showed in this video, well, you're really not going to make use of Deadeye, so then you would want Fire Prevention. That would be the other build that you could run. Get basic survivability first instead of Adrenaline Rush, build Fire Prevention, and then you're going to be a great tank. But uh, I prefer Deadeye just to have that extra accuracy at long range in random battles. Um, again, pretty basic uh, consumables, or upgrades, sorry. Uh, reload, concealment, you get really nice concealment on this ship, 13.4. You can run propulsion mod or damage control system mod. I don't have basics of survivability yet. That's why I've been running damage control system mod too. Once I get basics of survivability, I'm sure I'm going to switch to prop mod. This ship has a really weird engine where it actually accelerates and deaccelerates very quickly, with, especially with prop mod. And so you can speed juke forward and backward, forward and backward, and you'll dodge a lot of shells. Or you're, you'll force a lot of shells to miss your superstructure. And then it'll hit your deck armor and just shatter. So a very strong way to play this ship is on an island, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. Um, aiming system's pretty standard. What else are you going to take on this ship, really? Um, damage control system mod 1, very good. And then I take damage control party mod 1, because your turrets don't really break on this ship. And uh, the extra consumable time of these is actually pretty handy. Getting it up to 15 seconds-ish is pretty nice for maybe disengaging, you know, repairing a fire and then going dark because of your uh, detectability range resetting, or just being immune for a little bit longer. Um, it's 
it's pretty nice to use because I am often using these a lot in game because they come up so fast. I don't feel bad about damage controlling really quickly. It's a strong ship to play if you're wanting to push. And since secondaries are so bad, I would say this is the best brawling battleship in the game right now. Uh, Ohio used to be probably the best, uh, but not anymore because Ohio's not as tanky as this, and its secondaries are almost useless now. So this is this is my go-to pushing one right now. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day.